to start out? You want us to? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare episode 14. It's not 14, it's 15. Start over. Well, that's awkward. (laughs) What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare episode 15. I am one of your hosts, James Walter, and with me, the guy that can actually count episodes, Mr. Chris Garcia. What's up? Wow. <laughs> Apparently, I tweeted out that it's episode 15, and then we started the show, and I said episode 14, and I don't know why. We have still made it 15 episodes. We've made it 15 episodes, and this week, for the very first time, we're live on Meerkat. Hi, you, Meerkat. You guys can't see it. They can. Thanks for watching us. So, we're going to try Meerkat this week. Next week, we're going to try Periscope. Okay. Okay. See uh, how the feedback is for both of them. Are you going to try Ustream or anything else? Uh, yeah, we'll try some other stuff too. Okay. But, you know, trying to just get out there as many ways as possible. So, Chris, did you have a good week? I did have a great week. Did you hear all the news that happened this last week? After you texted me, yes, I did. There was so much that happened. There was Star Wars Celebration. Lots of movie trailers came out. Lots of video game trailers came out. It's just been a busy week, so someone didn't do a lot of tech research because they were caught up in Star Wars. Which is totally worth it. And movies. That's totally worth it. So there'll be not a lot of tech this week, but there will be a lot of good discussion about movie trailers. So if you're into movie trailers, you're going to enjoy this episode. If you're not into movie trailers, well, you'll still enjoy the episode. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the stories, and then after the break, we'll get into the movies. We have some short stories today, but they're v- very well worth reading. Absolutely. Absolutely. It might be a short episode this week, but we've got a lot of information that is condensed. That's right. Um, so the first story comes from Hartford, Connecticut, and you, not everyone knows this, but the University of Connecticut goes uh, comes from there. University. Really? UConn? UConn. UConn. It's from Connecticut. Everyone knows UConn. Good to know. Let's see here. Uh, The baseball team welcomed its newest member. You would think, you know, a college student. College student. Freshman. Maybe a freshman. Freshman, Maybe like a 17, 18-year-old. Yeah. Big news, right? Yeah. This one actually comes from a younger child. Uh, 16. No. 15. No. Two. Close. We're close close to there. We'd be five years old. Five years old. How's there a five-year-old playing with UConn's baseball team? Well, he, uh, this boy's name is Grayson Hand. He's from Massachusetts. Must be a very... Very big UConn fan. Uh, But he was uh, diagnosed with leukemia, and he has been battling it for quite some time now. But uh, he joins the Huskies with the help of the Team Impact, an organization that matches children with life-threatening or chronic illnesses to college sports teams. Now, I think this is a great success here. Um, I think it's great that mm -hmm. they brought him on. Um, I imagine it's because... You know, he has leukemia and probably Mm -hmm. really likes UConn. And Mm -hmm. so they have this thing that they do, right? And they just brought him on. And did it say what the organization was that that did this, that set it up? Uh, Uh, Was it just UConn that did it themselves or was there someone in the middle? Well, it's somewhere also in the middle. It says, reports seniors Carson Cross and Blake Davey were inspired to get involved with the Boston-based organization after hearing positive stories from the UConn men's hockey team, which also welcomed a youngster to their team. Okay. Um, hands or hand the boy will have his own locker and attend as many games and practices as he likes. Awesome. This is a uh, very good. This we, is like real life bench warmers. Definitely. We've we've heard some stories like this in yes. the past, and this is a very strong one as well. This is um, great. I've seen I've seen stuff like this coming from um, the Boston Bruins, mm-hmm. uh, the yep. hockey team. The I'll, hockey team, they did something very similar, actually. With it was the, big news at the beginning of the hockey season. With the with the boy with uh, Down syndrome? I think it was that. Yeah, yeah, so I guess this is really centered in Boston. You know, they say it's only focused on college teams, but I think they have a bigger am- impact everywhere else. I think so. I think this is great that teams are making an effort to uh, help, you know, people, you know, just be cheerful and, mm-hmm. you know, have something to look forward to other than all the negative stuff going on because of the disease that they have. Now, I don't know if this is just based in Boston. It looks like it is, but I really hope it spreads out. I, I think it's going to start spreading mm-hmm. as more stories come out like this. People go, hey, this is, this is this a good idea. This is really idea. cool. I mean, this is a really good idea. It brings people or together. Or maybe this organization will just spread out and start reaching out to other colleges also. Really, it's it's costless. Like, you really don't have... I mean, what, are yeah, you losing a $15 ticket? Maybe even less? I mean, and, and, well, that's really locker, not even a loss. It, there's a locker taken up, but I mean, 
It's just good all around. It's good for everyone. Definitely. Now, what else is good for everyone to hear, Chris? Well, what happened on Monday? Um, the Jurassic World trailer came out. That too. We will get to that later. The Boston Marathon. The Boston Marathon. I believe. The Boston Marathon. Definitely. I was watching the feed on Snapchat all week or on Monday, which is actually really cool. Really, I was working on Monday. I was too. I had time to do some stuff sometimes. But um, Boston Marathon. The Boston Marathon. Everyone knows what happened you know, two years ago. Two years ago. Um, but right now, everyone's looking positive. Everyone's... It was very positive. Actually, I didn't hear anything negative come out of the Boston Definitely Marathon not. this year. So uh, that's thought, good. You, know, you would have thought people would have scrapped it and said, you know, I don't want to do it. Maybe it's too dangerous. Maybe things are, you know, are different. But things have changed. Quite the opposite, actually. Quite the opposite. Why don't you tell them what's going on? <clears throat> or what happened? I guess it's over now. Well... How how far is the Boston Marathon? Is it? It's a marathon. It's a marathon, so it's a five k. No, no, that's no. a five k. It's five k. So it's a marathon. Twenty six, so twenty six point one, something like that. Yeah, it's twenty six point one miles. Um, but I guess what you can say is a lot of the people that were involved two years ago are now healed and trained, and now a lot of them were able to cross the finish line uh, that they wish they could have done two years ago. That's right. A lot of them have boosted and um, succeeded their dream, uh, even with some with prosthetics. Uh, now, I, I think it's a big, big feat. I think it's amazing. It's amazing for someone who that has gone through something emotionally and physically uh, to be able to cross this finish line. Because knowing me, I wouldn't even make it a mile. I I, I, barely, I did a five k once, and that was pretty rough. And we probably walked more than half of it. The person I was doing it with, mm -hmm. so. So, I'm just impressed I, anyone I, even I'm does a marathon in the beginning, yeah. and then someone that has prosthetic leg doing it, and then on top of that, the reason they have the prosthetic leg is because of running the marathon before during the Boston bombing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I guess this particular story was about a lady who was in the Boston marathon during the bombing. Um, she was right there when it went off, lost her leg after... Yeah. Like 17 surgeries or something like 17 that. 17 surgeries and it's None of them could quite fix the leg, so she finally decided to amputee it. She has a prosthetic leg now, and she went back to run the marathon this year. Her um, doctor told her that, you know, she, they probably shouldn't run the whole thing this year, so she started at mile like 23 or something like mm -hmm. that. So she still ran past the point where the bombing happened. Yes. And then continued on and finished the marathon. Yeah, she says, um, Started at mile 23, still crossing spot where she thought she was going to die. Yeah. Um, she was right there when it happened. So Gregory, she, uh, Rebecca Gregory. Uh, it's just amazing. It, it Absolutely. I mean, not only did she go and run another marathon, she went back to Boston to where it happened. She also uh, put it on. finished the race. She put it on Facebook too, man. She, I mean, I'll be honest. I, That's dedication. I, it really is. I, I've saw a lot of footage on Snapchat and other on other feeds of people who are amputees, but they have prosthetics or and they and a they lot still of them running a lot of them a lot still of running. Them. You know, so it's, it's not amazing. only her, but it's a lot of other people. But you know, uh, she gave praise to God and everything else. And you know, I hopefully this is an inspiration because uh, ESPNW also uh, took care of this and and uh, really showed her what she can actually do. So. Um, her testimony is wide open and hopefully shows people that they aren't alone with their problems and struggles. No, I think it's it's great that she went out there. She was so open about it, about telling her story, about what happened. She was very real about when she was laying there and she was worried that she was going to die. And she might mm -hmm. not see her kids again. And then that she would come back and very intentionally start in front of where that happened so she could run past it and finish the race that she started two years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's just amazing. Well, we got um, yeah, Lalisa De Sisa of Ethiopia won the whole uh, Boston Marathon. Um, so shout out to him and also everyone running Just the race. Shout out to everyone that did everyone. the marathon. I, I couldn't do a marathon, so that's very impressive. And, to and me. showing the courage after what it, everything had yeah, happened. Yeah, going back to Boston. Definitely. Doing it again. So, uh, But we will be getting to Star Wars. We will be getting on. to Star Wars. We're going to have a little teaser right now. A little now. teaser from Star Wars Celebration. Because Star Wars is a celebration. We did have a... Yeah, there was a celebration. There was Star um, Wars Celebration. Mm -hmm. It was in Anaheim. In Anaheim, California. It was a nice celebration where they announced a lot of Star Wars stuff. They had a lot of panels with a lot of cast and producers and 
Um, you know, just a whole lot of good Star Wars fandom going on. Just a great intro for next next year or this year? This year? Star Wars oh is coming out gosh. this year. Time is going way, way too fast. It's coming in December. It's way too fast, man. It's, can't get here soon enough. I no. love Star Wars. So, uh, who's everyone's favorite droid? Um, that'd be HAL 2000. HAL 9000. HAL 9000 from that, Space that, Odyssey 2001. Is that your favorite? No, of course not. R2-D2. Come R2 on. R2-D2. No one really likes C-3PO. He's always negative. Except for Rachel. She was more of, what, iRobot? Was that your favorite droid? Terminator? Terminator. Probably Terminator. She likes stuff that kills things. Well, we gotta add that to the list. How are we gonna see Terminator Genesis when that comes out this year? You won't understand how terrible the movie is. Well, we're gonna have a movie now. Anyways, back to R2-D2. So, everyone's real favorite Everyone's droid. favorite droid, even though we don't have no idea what he says. Well, only per, only person who's cussing the whole time, right? That's why I have to beep it out. <laughs> the, the only person who does know what he's saying is C-3PO, because C-3PO, C-3PO can speak six million languages. He, he's flown in over six million forms of communication. Exactly. So, he kind of interprets everything. But, this did not need to be interpreted. This did not. A boy in a wheelchair uh, was having a great time at the convention. Just and, having a good old time. Definitely. And uh, R2-D2. I mean, I'd be having a good time if I was at oh, Star Celebration. R2-D2 rolled up next to this kid. Right and, up next to him. And started dancing with him. Which is actually really cool. I think I would have probably died. It's if, really cool. And you know what's really even cool? cooler? This was a fan-made R2-D2, apparently. Let's see. That Yeah, yeah fan-made. It was until a fan-made R2-D2. And just came on over, and the person that made it just had to come on over and start dancing with him, and it started following him around, and uh, this kid was just having a great time. Definitely. Uh, even though the story, is, the story is very short. The video was the not The video very short. was not, but we will put that we'll on. We'll put it in the show notes. On the show notes, you guys the can check that out. Theweeklyflare.com. Go check them out. They're all there from all the episodes. But seriously, though, Star Wars Celebration happened. It was awesome. Did you see anything on that? Did you, you know? Um, you there was like it? a new trailer for The Force Awakens, which we're going to talk about after the break. There was a new trailer for Star Wars Battlefront, which I'm really excited about because the Battlefront series were some of my favorite video games. So that, that's coming back. Um, DICE is handling it, so they're real popular with Battlefield. So I'm pretty excited about that. The trailer for it um, looks amazing. They actually went into Lucasfilm's archive, the whole like vault really is what it is. Mm-hmm of all the props from the original trilogy. And they basically 3D scanned in everything they're using. So they didn't like computer generate like the ATST mm-hmm. for instance. They went in, scanned in the model that was used in Return of the Jedi and put that model in the game. And they did that with the stormtroopers, the speeders, wow. like everything. So all the armor, the characters that you're seeing, the models, it um, it's the props that were used basically. They went to the, the film locations and they went at the film locations that took a lot of video, photography, just really trying to capture the feel of the original movies. Um, they've gone so far as the special effects even look very similar to how it was um, portrayed in the movies and in the original Battlefront games. Um, not like it was in the prequel trilogy where everything was real glossy and real CGI. They've, they've gone a real long way in making sure that um, it's what the fans want, really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, th- there's stuff that the fans are going to be upset about. There's not a true single-player campaign. There's no space battles, which was something they introduced in Battlefront 2. But it's going to have 40-player ground missions. Mm-hmm. You can get in TIE fighters and X-Wings and fly around the battlefield. It looks like you can fly the Millennium Falcon, which is going to be pretty cool. And they're bringing back the hero, so if you do well enough, you can have the chance to play as Darth Vader or Boba Fett. Um, some Jedi, I'm sure they haven't announced which ones it doesn't look like. Uh, but it looks like they're going to do a really good job keeping this true to what Star Wars is, but introducing the Frostbite 3 engine, which is just amazing. What um, what was a video game on the N64? Which one? For, for Empire Strikes... No, Shadows of the Empire. That was one. it that one where you can type in the secret code and type in Chicken Walker? Yeah, it was Wampa Stampa, uh-huh. right? And you can control the ATST. No, Chicken Walker was in Rogue Squadron. Gotcha. That was in Rogue Squadron. Yes. I want to play those games again. (laughs) A lot of people were kind of upset there's not space battles, but I really feel like that EA is, since they control Star Wars video game properties for the next 10 years now, 
I really feel like they're going to pick someone else up to do a Rogue Squadron based game that's just okay. space battles. I think that would be a great idea. I don't think DICE, I love DICE and I love their game engine, but I don't think they're who you want to do your flat sim. Mm. Their vehicle controls are really good for ground. It'll be interesting. They, I mean, they have the jets in, in, um, in Battlefield and they work well. But I think they're going to try and find someone who's really good at doing flight sims, which I'm not sure who does that anymore because there's really no one doing flight sims. Mm -hmm. There's a couple fight flight sim fighters, but they're not really great. Mm -hmm. You know, this can keep things separated. They can have the people who like to have. The other theory I heard today was that they think Star Wars Battlefront is going to be like all the Star Wars games are going to encompass them. They'll be like Star Wars Battlefront Rogue Squadron, kind of like expansion pack mm -hmm. kind of things. I don't think that's as feasible, but I could see where they're coming from with that as far as DICE is concerned, because DICE likes to do expansion packs for all the Battlefield games. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so we got one more thing we want to talk about real quick before the break, and then we're going to get into all the movie trailers. But first, Chris. You have your phone? You have a cell phone? Yes, I do. You have Wi-Fi? I do. Everyone has cell phones mm -hmm. now, right? I mean, there's people all over the world that have cell phones. And uh, one of the biggest problems with smartphones, of course, is your data. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I know that from this week. Data prices, data consumption, the amount of data you have, don't have, the cost of it. If you have signal, if you don't have signal, it's just a mess. Well, Google is going to try and alleviate that with what they're calling Project Fi, Project F-I. Basically, um, it's gonna be their own network that um, is gonna run off of Sprint and T-Mobile, I think, to start with. But the pricing is what's really interesting. So it's $20 a month to get unlimited talk and text, and of course, Wi-Fi, um, Wi-Fi tethering, and international coverage in 120 countries. And then data. It's just a flat $10 per gig. Mm. Okay. Now, $10 a gig, comparatively, is a pretty good price. It's not the best price you could probably yeah. find, but it's pretty good. Now, here's where it gets in interesting. So, it's $20 a month for talk and text, $10 per gigabyte. So, if you want like three gigs a month, it's $30. So, it's $50 for the whole month. However, any data you don't use, you get refunded that dollar value. Okay. So if you buy thirty, so if you buy three gigs and you only use one and a half, you're gonna get refunded fifteen dollars. Okay. And then you can just apply that to your next month, I imagine. Um. So you, it's it's not quite the same as your data carrying over to the next month, mm -hmm. but I think this is actually more interesting because now, say, you know, some you say you want like four gigs of data a month because you don't want to worry about going over, but then say one month you only use two, or you're gonna get money back that month. But then the rest of the months, you know, you're good to go for that month you're covered. So I think it's really interesting. It's only open to uh, people with a Nexus 6 right now. Okay. Is that more like a test run? They're going to test with the Yeah, it's just, a, it's just an app. It's an invite only right now. Um, so, you know, not a lot of people can get it unless you bought a Nexus 6. But it is interesting. This has been rumored for a long time that Google is working on some sort of a, a wireless network. Mm. And uh, I think it's interesting that what they're going to do is have this paid plan that's very similar in the cost structure to Google Fiber. Which, I don't know if you know, but Google Fiber, mm. um, if you have like a normal 5 megabit per second download speed, um, it's actually free. You okay. just pay for the installation. So it's like $300 for the installation and okay. free. And then if you want the faster one gigabit per second, it's uh, whatever the monthly fee is, like $70 a month or something mm -hmm. like that. But there's no installation cost then. And it's just 70 and it's a gigabit per second, which is amazingly yeah. fast, first off. And second off, the price is super competitive yeah. with anyone else's internet service. And they're doing the same thing here. They are not. They don't have a free plan, but you could feasibly pay $30 a month, and then if you never use that gigabyte of, gigabit of, gigabyte of data, mm -hmm. you would just get money back. Yeah. And it has Wi-Fi tethering, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if you have your phone and then you want to use your tablet or your computer, whatever, it's all there. Uh -huh. It's all included, it's just one big sum of data. Um, it's super competitive, 
Um, and I, th I really think that they're going to spread this out um, to be something big. So that's Google, that's Project Fi. You can go to the Google blog to see, read more about it. All, a lot of tech companies I saw today covered it also. Um, and we wanted to cover it here also because we think it's pretty cool stuff. So, Chris, we're going to take a quick break. Definitely. And then when we get back, we're going to talk about movie trailers. Okay. About how not to do a movie trailer. About how to do a movie trailer. About how to do an amazing movie trailer. And how you should do a movie trailer. And all four of those are related to a movie trailer that we just watched before we started recording. Yeah, definitely. And no joke. And, and by the way, we're leaving out Terminator Genesis because everyone who saw that trailer pretty much knows the whole plot to the movie. And I think that's pretty obvious that that's not how you should do a movie trailer, so we don't even need to touch that, which we just did, I guess, now. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Terminator Genesis trailer? I have not. Don't, don't. It's the whole movie, okay. basically, that's in three fine. minutes. So don't watch it. I wouldn't be interested in that movie, anyways. So anyways, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be right back. So don't go away. 